you guys. Welcome to your second tutorial on Autodesk's 1 2 3D design. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to actually build something using the program, and uh, we're going to be building a coffee cup. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is select an object and put that into the field here. So, we're going to look uh, here at our primitives menu and we're going to choose a cylinder because a coffee cup is basically a cylinder. Now we click here and we see that we've uh, got a height of 10 millimeters, uh, sorry, a height of 20 millimeters and a radius of 10 millimeters, which is way too small for a coffee cup. So we're going to need something that's considerably larger than that. Uh, we're going to be looking at something that's about eight and a half centimeters uh, in diameter. So, or rather, uh, the radius is going to be eight and a half centimeters. So, the diameter of that is going to be half that, which is going to be 4.25. So, I'm going to go with 42.5 for uh, my radius. And then on my height, we're going to go with 110 because that's going to give us uh, that's 11 centimeters. There we go. Now we got a nice, decent sized coffee cup. I'm going to scroll out so we can see it. There we go. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna pan just a little bit so we got a better view of it, and then we'll zoom back in. Okay, there we go. All right, now the second part we need is a handle. So I'm gonna go back to my primitives menu and I'm gonna select the Taurus. I don't know why they call it a Taurus, but there it is. We select it, and again, this thing's pretty small. So if you remember, um, the object, the uh, the cylinder is uh, 110 millimeters or 11 centimeters tall. So we're going to make this, uh, we're going to make it nine centimeters. So let's go with 90. And again, I'm making a mistake. So our diameter is uh, 45. Our radius, sorry, our diameter is 90. Our radius is only 45. So let's go with 45. There we go. That's much more manageable. And then our minor radius here, we're going to make that bigger. Let's make that about a five. That's nice and meaty. There we go. We click enter. Okay, cool. Now we've got uh, part of our, our handle here and our cup, except that's not really a handle, is it? It's more like uh, a full circle. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to cut this thing in half. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my view a little bit. Sorry, guys, let's pan over. Let's rotate slightly. There we go. That's a better view. Okay. Now, how you do that is uh, you need to cut this thing in half. So, the first thing we need is what's called a reference line. So, we're going to go to our sketch option and we're going to go over to spline. I don't know what a spline is, but uh, spline is what we're going to do here. So, we click here. And we're going to click on the surface to start sketching. I'm going to click in the middle here. I don't know why our uh, our grid just did that, some kind of glitch. We'll click here. Now we're going to go all the way to the other side, and we're going to click again. Oh, look, our grid reappeared. So now we're done there. Now we should be able, there should be a green box that lets us click out of this. But for some reason, it's not appearing. So let's try this again. Let's go to Sketch. Let's click Spline. Okay, clicking here. There we go. Now we got our green box. Okay, good. Click here, move all the way to here. And notice how I kind of let it go. Um, it's, it's not exactly the length of the torus, which is fine. It doesn't need to be. Once I'm done, I just click on this little uh, green checkbox and ta da, we've got our line. Now that line is going to be the reference point for how we split the object. So it's going to split right down that line. So our next move is going to be to go to our uh let's see here it's called modify box and we're going to go down here to split solid now we're going to select the body to split that's our first option here you see and then the next option is called splitting entity which is our line there so we're going to click on splitting entity and then we're going to select our line now it shows us hey that's the plane you're cutting it along okay cool so we just click off to the side here and Voila, it sliced it for us. So now look, we've got two separate halves. So we can delete this line because we don't need it anymore. We do that by just selecting it, hitting the delete on the keyboard. We can also delete one half of this because we don't need it. So I'm going to select this half and delete it because this one's already basically oriented in the direction we want to go. And oh, 
look at that. We're halfway there. Okay, now let's rotate around here. Let's get out of the top view. Let's go to the side view here. There we go. I'm going to rotate around slightly. Perfect. Okay, now we need to connect this to this. So we're going to click on it. We're going to select now these options come up here down here at the bottom. We're going to collect our, select our move option and then we're going to rotate it. Now that's not rotating the right direction. That's going to rotate it like this. We want to rotate it. Let's get it back to zero here. Let's just hit zero degrees. There we go. Uh, let's go select it. Huh. Not popping up the way we want. That's fine. We can go up here and get our move option just as easily. There we go. Move. There we go. Okay. Now we want to rotate it, not that direction, but the other direction. Let's see if we can get it going the way we want. We may need to rotate slightly. Here we go. Let's rotate to a different view. So again, guys, you're seeing the importance of the different viewpoints when manipulating objects. We'll scroll out a little bit. In fact, I'm even going to pan a little bit. Here we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now we can probably rotate this thing the way we need to. There we go. Okay, so now I can click it and rotate it. So now I've rotated it 90 degrees. 92. There we go. 90 degrees. So it's perfectly uh, up and down in its orientation to the side of the cylinder. Now I got to rotate back, and we can see that it's halfway through the grid now. So we need to click on this arrow to move it up we're moving it up here and now we need to click on this arrow to move it in up, up there we go all right now i'm gonna rotate slightly i'm gonna zoom in and make sure that everything looks like it's good there all right cool i'm gonna go to the top view i'm gonna zoom out that looks good okay now what i'm gonna do is join these two pieces so I'm going to go back up here to my modify option and I should have an option that says join. Let's see here. Oh, you know, what? sorry, it's in the it's in a separate uh, option here. It's in the combine option here. So I'm going to go to combine and I'm going to click merge. Here's merge. Select one target, select the other target and boom. Now they're joined. It was as simple as that. So I'm going to go back to my side view and you can see if we click on this object now and go to move, we're moving the whole thing and not just the individual parts. See? Ah, look. So our coffee mug is coming along, except there's still one small problem. <gasps> We can't drink out of it because it's still a solid cylinder. So there's one more step we have to take, which is to extrude a hole in it so that we can actually drink out of it. So this next step, we need to draw a circle. Now we need to draw a circle that's slightly smaller than the uh, overall diameter of uh, the circle that makes up the rim of the coffee mug, because if we made it just as big, well, the coffee mug wouldn't have any walls, so it would just break when we tried to 3D print it, or uh, and or it just wouldn't wouldn't hold up. So let's go to draw or sketch in this case, and we're going to sketch a circle. Now it's going to say click to sketch, okay, and then they're going to say specify the center. So I'm just going to get as close to the center as I can here. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to draw it out. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now remember, our the diameter of our um, coffee mug here was uh, 90. So we're going to want to go with something that's about 80. Let's see here. There we go. Let's go to, in fact, I'm going to type in 80 exactly. And voila. Okay, now we've got it. Now what we're going to do here is we're just going to move this slightly. So there we go. Now, you can see it's in the center. We've got a nice rim around the edge of the cup. And the last thing we need to do is extrude. So I'm going to go back down to my front view. I'm going to 
go to my construct option and I'm going to click extrude. Now what extrude gives me the option of doing is basically what I'm doing is drilling a hole in this object. So I'm going to click on the 3D shape to extrude and now it gives me this option. I can go up if I want to but I don't want to add to this object. I want to take away. So I'm going to dig down into it so it's actually negative. So I'm going to go down, 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 down. Now we did 110 millimeters as our thickness. So I'm going to go to, I'll leave a five millimeter thick bottom. And we'll go to, actually I'll leave a six millimeter thick bottom. Why not? I'll click there and we're done. Let's click back up to top. Well, look at that. We have a mug. Now, as you can see off to the side here, it's a little bit off because we did it fast and our circle's slightly off, but it would still stand up if we 3D printed it. So what we're going to do now here is we're going to go to our options here. There's our options, and we're going to export as 3D. And look, we've got an option of STL file. So we go to STL file. We're going to... Uh, select fine tessellation setting because that's going to give us the best quality STL file. We're going to click OK. And then we just need to uh, select where we're going to store it to. So I'm going to st store this as mug number two. I've been doing a little bit of practice here. So mug number two, I click save. And guess what? We now have an STL file. So if we want to, let's exit out of here. I'm not going to save because I've already saved everything. We're going to go to uh, Cura, which is our slicing software. I'm going to show you how this, I'm sorry, we're using Craftware, not Cura. My apologies. Okay. We're going to go to Craftware. We're going to add, we're going to go to mug number two, our STL file, and boom, there it is, our mug, which we can now manipulate, resize, slice, and print. So you've, we've created an object using Autodesk that we can now import into our slicing software and 3D print. All I need to do now is put this, uh, generate the G-code, stick it into a 3D printer, and you've got a 3D printed object, guys. So while this is just a mug, which is a really simple object, you can literally design anything in CAD. So the more you play around with it, the better you get at using it, um, the more stuff you can make and the more incredible the designs are that you're going to be able to come up with and generate on your own. Uh, so please play around with it, get familiar with it, and most of all, have fun and get creative. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.